Wayne Waite and Louis Gallant had been best friends for many years. On the morning of January 14th, 1984, their friendship was tested to the limit high up in the mountains of Nova Scotia, Canada. Early on that winter morning at the Irving Big Stop truck stop, Louis Gallant spotted a familiar face when he stopped for breakfast. When I pulled in, that's when I noticed it was Wayne Strzok. So I just figured, well, I'll go wake him up and we'll probably run down the road together. Yeah, well, that was pretty good food. Yeah, that's good. So I just figured somebody to talk to on the radio just makes the trip that much better than running by yourself. Wayne Waite was driving an 18-wheel refrigeration truck packed with 47,000 pounds of frozen food. Louis' flatbed semi was hauling 33,000 pounds of steel. the way as they headed out around 6 a.m. Though they both drove for the same company, it was the first time they had ever driven this road together. So we'll just run along, chatting back and forth now, CB radio. Okay, uh, uh, why don't you let me come around you there, Wayne? Uh... Okay, hang on a second. I'll let you know this way up ahead. we got a straight coming up. to go by him. I don't normally do that. It's just something I don't know. Just done it that day. Oh, now there's a first time for everything. I've never had to look at your taillights before. As soon as the vehicles get to the top of the mountain, they're approaching a grade that they have to slow down, use lower gears. They have to approach 180 degree turns as a very treacherous mountain that they have to come down on. At the top of the hill, eh? Okay, buddy, what do you think about coming off here about 20 miles an hour? Yeah, that's about uh, top of the lane. I don't want to go through those death turns any faster than that, Wade. Yeah, me neither. We'll just take her down here, either. I'll get back to you in a minute. I'm going to check the brakes. The other guy. Well, I don't have any brakes. I have nothing. You're joking, right? No, I'm not kidding. I'm serious. I have nothing. All of a sudden, Wayne, always on the radio. He lost his brakes. Okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to dynamite him. Wayne then tried to use his emergency brakes. Nothing. Nothing. I thought you were joking for a few seconds. Wayne's tractor trailer weighed 49 tons, fully loaded. A truck that heavy could not possibly make it safely to the bottom of the winding mountain road without any brakes. It was the only thing to do. I had brakes, not knowing if they would hold two brakes or not. I, I had tried. Less than a mile ahead was a stretch of road with enough straightaway for Louis to attempt to use his truck to stop Wayne's. It was their only chance before they reached a curve so sharp it would be impossible for Wayne to maneuver without brakes. As they headed downhill, Wayne was rapidly picking up speed. Louis was forced to keep accelerating to stay ahead of Wayne's truck. Just trying 
to pay attention to what I was doing, but I got to watch the impact. I got to try to match his speed. I knew the danger of the turn, so hoping and praying, I guess, that, yeah, you get stopped before the turn. trucks came to a stop less than 500 feet from the curve. Louis Gallant escaped without any injuries. His friend, Wayne Waite, had only suffered a few bruised ribs. I thought it was all over. This was my last trip. Because at that mountain, if your brakes hold one vehicle, you're thankful. Because it is a treacherous mountain. Seven years later, Louis and Wayne and their families have become close. I knew I had one chance to save him. And uh, I just wanted to do it right. I didn't want no, no mistakes. If he would have hit an angle like lost controls now, like it would have probably took me out too. He was a friend before that, but he's a special friend now. It's quite an experience. You never forget. It's once in a lifetime. You never want it to happen again. Wayne still drives semis for a living, but three years after that day, Louis retired from trucking. 